Hey there, Blaze here, and today I want to talk about auto battlers, Dota Underlords, Teamfight Tactics, and Auto Chess Mobile. The auto battler genre is strange and kind of bad. It's like Yahtzee Battler, and maybe that's kind of cool, but I don't want to play Yahtzee for 40 minutes per game. Imagine if you had to wait for about a full minute after every round of Yahtzee. That's auto battlers. I basically think they're too random. There's some decision making, sure, but the things that give player agency are lacking. Let's dive into what you can do in Dota Underlords. You're given gold each round, with bonuses for win streaks and interest and lose streaks. Then you can purchase one of five random units. You can re-roll five random new units, or you can add experience to your level. So there are four things you can do with gold buy, re-roll, gain experience, or hold on to it for interest. You can then place those heroes on a grid, and you can equip a randomly collected item to a hero, and you can also sell heroes, and that's it. However, you can't choose what heroes you want. You're given five random ones. There's what, 50 or more? So if you're after a particular hero, you have a low chance to get it. In this regard, it's sort of like poker. If you could purchase the cards that you're given and pay to be given a new set of cards, and if your hand slowly got more powerful over time, maybe? That actually sounds kind of interesting, I quite like that. But in Dota Underlords, you are also given perfect information, and to be the best, it's expected that you use it. You can observe everyone else's units at any time, and by looking everywhere, you can get a mental tally of what is being used. Back to the poker example, if you had, say, two tens and two fives, you might try to get a ten or a five to get a full house. But if you look around at everyone else's cards, and see someone else also has two tens, then you know you can't get another ten, so you're only going for the five to fill out a full house but that means you have half the chance, and it might not be a good gamble to continue to pursue the full house. It's a lot easier to consider these things when you're talking about cards in a typical 52 card deck, with 13 unique cards duplicated across 4 suits. With Underlords it's tricky, I'm not entirely sure what the math is under the hood, but with Dota Auto Chess it was 45 of each 1 cost hero, 30 of each 2 cost, 20 of each 3 cost, 15 of the 4 cost, and 10 of the 5 cost heroes available each. That's a total of 1,565 total heroes in the pool. I think there's 59 unique heroes in Dota Underlords too. Back to the poker analogy, it'd be like if there were 59 unique cards to analyse with perfect information on your opponents. In addition, there's a battle that takes place. We're not talking simple full house beats flush resolution to these conflicts. There are simplified Dota heroes with abilities and passives and synergies and base attack, health and defense stats. It's complicated. And this means you're never sure if what you've got is good, or if it's good enough to win for you. In StarCraft, a handful of marines and firebats can manage to destroy an overwhelming zergling force with correct micromanagement of the unions and manipulation of terrain. But in this auto battle genre, well, it's in the name. You don't do battle with these units, they just do battle themselves. You can position them, but it's usually a type of protect the king thing where you bunker into a corner, or frenzy zerg onto them thing where you spread out a little bit but start close to your opponent. The decision is akin to put your archers at the back. Even in teamfight tactics, which has the hexagonal grid, it's just extra advantage adjacent spaces to watch out for, it's not super exciting, and I don't feel especially clever making the decision. And in the end, that means that sometimes the AI is to blame or credit for your wins or losses of individual battles. Sometimes you summon a unit at just the right time that takes the brunt of a few hits that would have killed one of your critical units, but you didn't summon it, your unit did, at a seemingly random location. It's just not hard to look at the genre right now and see that it's an RNG clown fest. 
In fact, that seems to be the main draw to the game, enabling it for all audiences. Sort of like Mario Party giving out stars for random reasons at the end. It's an auto-battler, so you don't need to have skill at micromanagement in a real-time strategy engine. You can't actually choose your units, so there's a huge element of chance that you're trying to manipulate by selecting a range of unit types and slowly leaning into the synergies and particular heroes and items that you get. And I guess it's just a bit slow too, because the game is happening simultaneously with other players and rounds, you move just as fast as the slowest battle. And it can be annoying when you absolutely destroy someone and then have, just have to wait ineffectually for the next minute. To win a game of Underlords can take about 40 minutes. I've seen games of Auto Chess take about half an hour, and same for Teamfight Tactics. It just seems that, for being such a simple game, there's a lot of fluff and faffing about. It's a bit similar to these idle games all over the place in mobile now. Some of these games you just upgrade and build and upgrade in perpetuity and it's just... Is that what people think a video game is? Don't get me wrong, these Auto Battlers, Dota Underlords, Teamfight Tactics, and Auto Chess Mobile. They are decent games, and at first glance I really enjoyed them, but upon closer inspection, it just feels like the whole game is the drafting part in Arena and Hearthstone. Choose the best from what you're given, again and again, for up to 40 minutes. In short, I don't mind a game of chance, but poker takes a few minutes per round. Yahtzee can take maybe 5 minutes per person to completely play through. 40 minutes of just dice rolling doesn't do it for me. I do have a suggestion or two for the genre as a whole. One thought I have is, you could make the random rolls less random somehow. Maybe weight the roll in some meaningful way. Limit it to only one cost units, or only assassins. Maybe each modifier adds one gold to the cost of a reroll. This would allow players to force the issue in the late game. Reduce the number crunching required. Give people a rough estimate of how many other units of each type are in use, so we don't have to memorize each other player's roster. It can just be low, medium, high use or whatever, which will let players know at a glance if the decision they are making is wise. Lastly, have an item shop instead of or in addition to the random items. This could allow some planning and meta building, rather than just hoping to do the best with what you've got. If this was done, selling items could also be a thing. You could even add in a pool system here, making it so players want to get the items they feel they need early on, so as to not miss out. See, that seems like such a basic thing to not include, and I get that this started as a Dota 2 custom map, and maybe things like that are harder to do than random item drops from defeated neutral monsters, but once everyone stepped up to making full games, features like this should have been thought on more. And look, simple can be good. But, personally, I just don't want to roll dice for 20 to 40 minutes at a time. It's a little controversial. Making the game have more depth means skill matters a little more, and... Hmm. But that's just my opinion. Am I wrong? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time.